my name is Andrew Poyden, and I'm part of the Process Automation Solutions team at Lakeside Process Controls. In this video, I'm going to show you a demonstration of two new Delta V modules that have been developed to help you minimize the amount of alarms you receive and to help control alarm floods if and when they occur. You can see on the left here that we have a simplified boiler where we're measuring fuel pressure and monitoring some status signals like loss of flame, common alarm, and low air pressure. Each of these signals has some kind of alarm associated with it to alert the operator when something goes wrong. I'm going to simulate a trip of this boiler on low fuel pressure. And we can see that because of this boiler trip, we now have multiple alarms showing up on our banner for not only the low pressure, but the air pressure, loss of flame, and common alarms as well. All of these alarms for what is essentially a single event. Now, this is a simplified example with only four alarms, but it's easy to imagine a situation where a dozen or more alarms come in at the same time like this, making the operator's job that much more difficult. Let me now reset the trip and I'll open the faceplate for the new advanced alarming module. If we look at the detail faceplate here, you'll see that this module allows you to specify up to 16 alarms that you want to consider as part of the alarm suppression. The idea here is that if one of these alarms occurs, the remaining alarms in the list will be suppressed. This module can be configured so that the operator arms the logic, or you could have it always armed, or armed when a certain condition happens. It's quite flexible. But now that the module is armed, let's again trip this boiler to see what happens. As the fuel pressure drops below the low alarm and eventually trips the boiler, you can see that the other alarms are dynamically suppressed and will not show up in your alarm banner. When one or more alarms are suppressed, the alarm suppress button in the banner above becomes visible in order to see the full list of alarms that were suppressed. So you can see that everything else in the list was suppressed. In addition, the detail faceplate for the alarm module will show the first out, indicating the cause of the trip. Once the alarm is acknowledged and the conditions are clear, you can then reset the module to rearm it, or this could be configured with some kind of auto reset logic. Let me now show you the second variation of these alarm suppression modules, which has a few extra features. For this example, we're looking at a compressor that has several alarms associated with it. If I simulate a trip of this compressor, you can see how many alarms will eventually become active as a result of this assuming these alarms have not been configured with some kind of conditions. We now have a single event, a compressor trip, which has caused a huge flood of alarms for the operator to deal with. Let me now acknowledge these alarms and clear the simulated trip. And if we open up the alarm suppression module, you'll see that again, we can configure all the alarms we want to include as part of the logic we can have up to 32 alarms in this variation. You'll notice that we also have an additional tab with the label Trigger Conditions. In here, we can specify two additional pieces of logic. One, you can define some permissives for triggering the alarm suppression, in addition to the buttons to arm and disarm the logic. So in this example, I'm saying that unless both upstream and downstream valves are open, I don't want this alarm suppression module to be armed and running. And number two, you can specify a series of conditions and how many of them need to be true in order to trip the alarm suppression module and suppress all of the alarms. If you remember in the previous example, just one of the alarms being active would trigger the suppression. But in this module, I have three conditions and one vote needed. So if one of these three conditions becomes active, the module will trigger the suppression of all the alarms. This can be configured with up to 16 conditions and as many votes as you like to trigger the suppression. So let me show you this module in action. When I have the logic armed and simulate a trip, once a trigger condition becomes true, all of the alarms in the list are suppressed and we get a common alarm in the banner. We can again see the full list of suppressed alarms on the alarm suppressed page. If we look at the faceplate, you'll notice a timer counting down. This is intended to give the operator time to address the problem. This can be configured to be as long as you like, 
and once the timer elapses you have a few options. In addition, if we look at the detail faceplate, we can see which of the three conditions was first to occur and trigger the suppression logic. Having a common alarm like this is similar into how a unit module alarm works. You can place control modules inside of a unit module to achieve the same effect. However, in the case of both of these alarm suppression modules, these can be configured and downloaded to the Delta V controller without modifying the existing modules in any way. So in that sense, it's a very non-intrusive way of addressing alarms in a live running plan, requiring no downloads of existing modules at all. In addition to this, I haven't shown this in the demo, but it's also possible to configure the alarm suppression modules to instead of suppress an alarm, actually change the priority of the alarm when it trips. So for example, you could have an alarm that is normally critical, but if an alarm flood is detected, you can instead log it as just an advisory alarm. And of course, you can have a mixture of alarm suppression and dynamically changing priorities to achieve whatever results you need. This concludes the demo. Thank you for listening, and if you have any questions regarding this or any other alarm management services provided by Lakeside, please feel free to reach out to us via the contact information shown here. Thanks, and have a great day.